<laughs> Michael, here's your 20 minutes of silence. <laughs> I've already lost control of the segment, <laughs> and we haven't. We literally did not start the segment, and we already lost. I already lost control of it. Anyway, welcome back, everyone. This segment is sponsored by Tenable Network Security. Are you looking for a career change? Because Tenable Network Security is hiring everything from programmers to researchers. Check out all of the available positions. That's job positions, okay. Larry. Okay. Securityweekly.com forward slash Tenable Jobs. I want to highlight a bunch of. Uh, job openings that Tenable has, um, first and foremost. So currently, there are 60-plus job openings in engineering alone wow. at Tenable. I'm glad, I'm glad me, you said job openings. You guys openings. are the industry shortage. Yes, yes we are. Let, let me stress, by the way, these are growth positions. Uh, these are We are growing um, just amazingly rapidly and want to grow even faster. Yes. Um, so you, this is you may want to grow to be Jack's assistant. I mean, that's really wow. the most coveted position within <laughs> Tenable is time Jack's. To, time to step up your cocktails game. That's right. I'll, I'll, I'll be your bartender, Jack. Yeah, yeah Jack's bartender. That's Ooh, the yeah, that. there's, uh, no, so uh, real positions at Tenable. Vulnerability researchers requires a strong sysadmin and scripting backgrounds. Compliance researchers where you get to write audit files and plug-in writers. Knowledge of federal and industry-specific standards is preferred. Reverse engineering has one opening, working with lots of different technologies. C and C++ software engineers, especially if you have experience with packet capture, socket programming, and protocol development. You can't build great stuff without QA engineers. We like our QA teams to know a little about security. So if you want to do QA, that can be a great growth position as well. Positions for software engineers and web application developers who dig security, such as web back-end developers who know something about Elasticsearch, data modeling, and analytics, as well as Amazon Cloud Services. Uh, extra, pro, extra points if you knew the Go programming language. Do you know the Go programming language? I've heard of it. Um, don't I guess it's better that. than the Stop programming language. Yeah, which, speaking of which, I'm surprised you haven't said you had to go already. That's right. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> my, my bladder's not... Oh, all right, it is kind of small. The logo's really cute for it, though. Thank you. It's a little so thing. It is. Oh, not for my bladder. I thought there was a logo <laughs> for my bladder. <laughs> there, was, there is. There you is. Just, it's like a little thimble. Yeah, you, <laughs> just don't, you just don't spend a lot of time on the internet. <laughs> so user interface developers who know JavaScript, uh, but also have experience building dashboards, software engineers who can build enterprise applications using PHP. Everything requires a strong Linux experience, so make sure you apply, again... The website you can go to is securityweekly.com forward slash Tenable Jobs. Come work with me and Jack and Carlos at Tenable. Um, so now, the top 10 reasons why you would want to get into information security. All right. Now, the list is completely wrong because there should only be one reason to get into information security, and that's the <laughs> chicks. <laughs> wait, wait. There's two reasons, the chicks and the money. No, I'm sorry. Three reasons, the chicks, the money, and the drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Jack has a solution to that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Wait, I like to encourage no, that no, everyone no. comes into this field. And Absolutely. To me, it doesn't We're matter. We're an inclusive field, that's right. Yeah, sex doesn't matter, religion, <laughs> race. You're not going to get any. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, oh, I wow. find that security isn't a profession, it's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. lifestyle. It is. Yeah. It, it is. is a lifestyle. You know, when it, it, it seems it, to be a calling, <laughs> when nothing else. When mm -hmm. when you're at Disney Disney World and Epcot and you're getting a coffee and you look down and you see exposed USB ports and you think, I wonder if those will do auto run. This is a lifestyle. I mean, mm -hmm. when you're at Disney with your family and you're getting extended and you're getting a oh, coffee and you dude, think about that. Disney stuff. the family is like one like mental Ongoing penetration test. Like, I wonder how I could hack that. Because they're like a huge adopters of technology, obviously. So, uh, everything mm -hmm. from the room keys to the magic bands, to well, which are your room key. Mm. Yeah, that's a. No comment. So, if you look at Disney World, like. So, one you're at number five. Test, you will never be bored. You will no never be you, 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 you will never be in bored. In good hacker spirit, Michael, we'll start with number five. You will never be bored. There's always some new technology that needs There's security. Always something to do. There is always. So this is this is your list, Paul. Uh, this is my list. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll go and five. I, and, and I and I think you may also tie number six into that. You get to break things. Yeah, that's yeah. part of being. I mean, you don't because you you will be breaking things so much you'll never be bored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You get to break a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We need more um, builders. We need less breakers. 
Well, you can. I agree with you on that one, Michael. You yes. can build and break but hardware I think it's, or software. I think it's fun. Well, yeah, which I, is I cool. actually think it's fun breaking people, but that's you can break people too. <laughs> but yeah. you can. The CIA seven, is hiring Jack. <laughs> number seven, you can love hardware or software or both, and you can build or break both and still work and secure it. I mean, there's a lot of overlap into both mm -hmm. hardware and software. I always um, fascinating. Throw, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Paulo. I was just. I, 20 years ago, when I declared that I was going to go into security, I was told it was career limiting. I was going to pigeonhole myself. I was my my sanity was questioned, although that was probably valid for a lot of reasons. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it was like, no, no, you need to be in networking. You need to be in infrastructure. That's where it's all at. The security thing. I mean, a that, that was a, a bigger fad than the internet. It's like and, uh, rap music it, was if, a fad. If only, if only um, those. Network people were still employed. You could say I told you so to them. But. <laughs> well, the funny part is, some of them are. They just haven't changed jobs in fifteen years. Right, and and whenever their company goes away, yeah. <clears throat> Certainly, they're, they're some of them have figured it out. But cloud and virtualization. You're not knocking the CCIE now, are you, Jack? Come on. <laughs> mm. Number eight. You'll most likely get to, or most likely have to, in a lot of cases, create things. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah. a fan of whether Whether you're a builder or a breaker, Mike, you still have to create things. And, and yet many times you have to build something to break something. Yes, exactly. So oh. this is like the MacGyver part of the job. Yes. Those of us yeah. old enough to have grown up with MacGyver. Yes. Yes. Um, number nine, you can help define standards as we're still, I would think, a relatively young industry uh, in need of defining standards. And we'll talk about mm. standards defining as mm. the case with the cyber UL in our next segment, Mike. Yeah, I was going to say, are we actually going to talk about it? Okay, in, in our next I'll, segment. Hold I'll that. Hold your thought. I'm going to save up. Save it up. Channel. Save I'm it up. Save, save it up. Save it up. <laughs> All right. So number 10, there's lots of opportunity to create your own startup in security. I, I certainly think there's a lot of growth oh, yeah. opportunity in this yeah. industry. Mm -hmm. So and there's a lot of need for it. Let's not just worry about the opportunity. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, you're right. We need yep. it. So I think that's great. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, number four, emerging industries will always need help with security. And, I mean, as tech, I mean, technology yeah. or really any other mm -hmm. industry mm -hmm. grows, they're going to need security. Uh, I, and I think we need to maybe clarify a little bit about that. Emerging industries always need help with security, but emerging industries may not always want help with yes. security. Well, right it's away. a security for startups conversation that we had. Yeah. A yeah. Weeks ago. Where is it useful? I think it's useful everywhere, but. Yeah. Yeah. But We're what biased. you're also saying right. here, too, is that, there, and I'm going to add a, a point to it, there's good job security, comma, as long as you're also willing to adapt. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. If you've got the right mindset for this, right? The back to the calling, it's a lifestyle. If if, if you, I always joked, but I don't think it's a joke. You know, our brains are like five degrees out of phase. We don't see the world the way other people do. We don't process stuff the same way. You, you put us in public, you know, and we're looking at. And if we've had experience with physical security, you're looking at physical security. You're thinking about what you'd pen test. You're wondering about what ports are open. You're looking at the Wi-Fi. You're looking at everybody doing stuff. You're thinking about social engineering. You don't see the world the same way as everybody else. If you can. And then apply that to a skill in an industry and realize that it's going to, right, our industry is going to shape and change. The industry is going to shape and change. You will never be without a position. There's well, always a need for that. Yeah, it kind of talks about my number three. There's plenty of jobs. Right now, it, there's plenty of jobs. Right now, there are plenty and of there jobs will in be. security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, this this may very much fall into the thing that uh, we've seen in the past where there was this huge demand for nurses. Mm -hmm. So the big deal was everybody went to nursing school. Yeah. And now the demand is relatively flat for nurses and everybody's got nursing degrees yeah mm. so be careful about that be careful about that well it, well there, one of the things that's thing. happening now is that people i think there are some people that are getting their degrees from diploma mills thinking that it's a good job with good money and they don't have whatever defect it is that most of us have that makes us think this is fun Mm. Um, and they're not comfortable with it. So I mean, this has got to appeal to you. You've yeah. got you've got to be interested in lifelong learning, or you know, get a job like mine where you can ignore things like that. Let yeah. me ask, let me ask a question. Because there's 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 five of us here. All right. So one of the things I've been thinking about when we talk about this perception of a shortage and what the schools are or aren't doing. Uh, I mean, Larry, I think I think you're right, at least from an analogy perspective. But Jack, I think you hit on something that I'm finding kind of interesting. I do not have a formal degree in computer engineering or computer science. I have a degree in human ecology, specifically applied economics. Uh, 
Jack, you, your background into the field of security is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, not laden with computer science, is it? Uh, that is that is uh, true. I uh, I did take uh, one semester <laughs> of computer stuff. Come on, those are punch cards. It doesn't count. doesn't count. I remember the good old days with punch cards. You know how you fuzz Fortran. punch cards? You know how you put fuzz punch card systems, right? That's what you <laughs> put on the golf punch. shows. Golf shoes, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> not these new modern rubber spikes and golf shoes either, goddammit. Um, yeah, sorry, wait, where were we going? Golf. Get off my lawn. Right, so, so you <laughs> don't have a, a tech background, uh, Larry? Hey, there's nothing uh, more technical than being a mechanic. Uh, technically, I have a business, so, business background. Someone needs to fuzz Apollo? Photoshop. Jack yeah, so I have a background in uh, new media, which is a combination of computer science and studio art. FYI, I actually just got a new job. I start on July 13th with uh, Con for Security. Nice. Congratulations, bro. Nice. Congratulations. And uh, so, so, Mike, to, to figure that out before the business thing, before I really wanted to knew what I was going to do when I grew up, I was actually going to go to art school. And that went sour, just so, yeah. I mean, You're an artist. I'm right you there with you, Larry. You just yeah. deal with bits and bytes now. You know, if well, I exactly. had my choice, I would be a burlesque photographer slash craft, bar, craft bartending cocktail mixer. You're only uh, ha you just, halfway there. I'm halfway there. You're just there. two centuries late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul? Paul, what's but, your background? But my background, uh, I always wanted to be on a podcast that was my lies and, and lies <laughs> you went to school and got a degree in podcasting and i went to school and got a degree in uh business and computer information systems okay so so a couple of you have some computer background to you but i mean look if you if you've been in this field long enough there wasn't a computer security degree there wasn't a computer security mm -hmm. program i mean nope. you know when we when i got started we had one book practical <clears throat> unix and internet security mm -hmm. and, and you had to figure it all out from CPAP that cpap illustrated I remember that one as well. I mean, I had a whole, I had a whole stack of them, right? The red but, book, so, the blue book. Yes. But I'm, I'm going to bring this back and talk about standards later, so I'm going to save that part of it. But, but okay. what I think is interesting is we we keep we, look. There's a lot of jobs, and there's going to be more jobs. But I'm not I'm not always convinced that the answer is well. We should just create uh, college courses and, and degree. No, this is this is a trade. This is a skill. There's a mindset to it. So keep in mind if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I don't have all those qualifications. You don't. You, we didn't need them. You, you don't need them. We can yeah. teach you. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if if you find yourself thinking the way we do in these public spaces, <clears throat> call us. This is this is my number two. You can apply or learn a diverse technical skill set. Yeah. Or even sometimes not so technical skill mm -hmm. set. I mean, there's. There's a security skill set, I guess, a mindset, sometimes more than a skill set. Yeah. Um, yeah. But as you know, Michael pointed out, we all come from diverse backgrounds in our careers and uh, educational yeah. experiences. I think there's a lot yeah. more Academia, resources. Ac yeah. Academic experiences. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? I, and I think you know probably along you know when you're when you're very young that this is something for you you may not even realize that it is what it is and i'm just thinking about back on this conversation that you know i remember being 10 and 11 years old and you know 11 years old home sick for a week and building rube goldberg machines and building stuff out of legos and cardboard and you sure. know being 10 years old and locking the desk the computer desk the little cabinet in the computer desk and putting the key somewhere and figuring out how to open it before I knew what a tension wrench and yeah, a rake was, yeah, exactly, and picking. So you locks. were like, you were like super sleuth in the house. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I guess or something. Larry is a good point too. If you learn lock picking, it's game over. <laughs> the minute I get inside your cola with a USB, that's it. It's mm. done. So Look at you busting out jargon, baby. Yeah. Oh, you kidding me? I actually lock pick. I actually won the lock pick contest at uh, the uh, B sides. So. Is there anything you're not good at, Apollo? I I am good at a handful of things. I you're just kind of like a, on. but if you, but yeah, like once you get it, like you you go with jack, best of. jack of yeah. all trades. I'm very obsessive when I start in getting in my hobbies. Yeah. No, that's the thing. He's a master of a few things, and he kicks ass at it. I, I try. Th there are a couple of things we ought to like jack. kick around. Uh, one is soccer ball. Go we US have women's. not. Uh, we haven't really addressed it, but uh, you know, it is possible to. Do these things. Uh, Steve McGrath and I uh, had a had a workshop on this in San Francisco um, at B sides, and we've, I've had these conversations. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, you have to sell your soul to work for a vendor, and the reality is, a lot of us that work at vendors, whether we're selling hardware, software, or services, or whatever, uh, we are trying to help people secure their environments while having yep. the the nerve to. Uh, want to 
uh, make a living, um, pay our bar tab, and maybe even a mortgage. But you know, you got to have priorities. Mm. Bar tab first, because you can live under the overpass. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if if, if you tip well enough, uh, you know, you can probably grab uh, grab some cardboard and uh, kind of make a tent behind the dumpster. And anyway. Uh, <coughs> it, and if you there tip are a couple really well, you know, sometimes you there get to are a lot of us in, in <laughs> vendor land gets a bad <laughs> rap, and it, it largely a lot of people deserve it. A lot of people are just they don't care whether they're selling refrigerators, um, snake oil, relabeled mm. super micro boxes with extra LEDs, uh, used cars doesn't matter. But there are a lot of us who are able to do what we do in the community able to talk to people, able to be honest about whether or not the products that you represent are the perfect fit, um, help people get the most out of their investments. Mm. Yep. Um, and, and it revolves around making sure you're comfortable with where you are and uh, the company that you work with um, is comfortable enough in what they do to let you be honest. And um, a lot of people think that's impossible, but, uh, you know... I, you can guess what company I think is pretty good at that. I bet mm -hmm. Paul will back me up. Yep. But there are certainly others that are um, that are good, and it's not as hard as you think to to be honest to yourself, be honest to your customers and clients, and still make a living and be in vendor space. Um, you know, and it's it, it is a challenge uh, sometimes, but you have to, you know, just be rational about it, and there. Companies, you know, talk to people. If you don't know the company well, don't know people at the company, dig around, you know, troll LinkedIn or whatever and find out about the organization before you join. But companies yeah. want you to be honest. The better companies want you to be honest. Otherwise, you're not going to build the relationships that are required in, in the business. And it's, you know, when you, uh, when you leave the company, you have to leave with your own reputation. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is a small industry. As big uh, so, as we're getting, this yeah, is small. Yeah, this, it's, still, mm -hmm. it's still small. So, you know, that's one point. It is possible to join vendor land. Don't let the vendor reputation. Yes, you know, some of the people that sell things for a living. Jack, can I take it a step further? Yeah, Don't absolutely. say it's possible. I think you should. You know, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I, it's you, I completely your timing agree. as you usual. Absolutely, you absolutely is, should. It, but a lot of people don't believe it's possible. No, uh, I know. But that's, I, I, I so I, I've maybe said this before and I've been, Thinking about writing it, and I've—I decided. It's funny on my ride home from the gym, on on route to this podcast, I thought, you know what, I gotta just sit down and write it. In in the the operating concept, and this is won't what won't, won't be what I publish is vendors aren't vultures. Stop treating them that way. Look, mm. guys, when I go speak at events, right? Because I work with technologists, I work with CIOs. If you go into the vendor, what they call the vendor villages or the tabletops, and there's a C, and it's just CIOs, you can't hear yourself think, you can't hear yourself talk, but what you'll hear is, oh, hey, I've got this problem. Charlie, come on over. Let me introduce you to so-and-so. This is how they're helping me solve it. And everybody sits around and they talk, and they talk very candidly. They admit that they have problems. They admit that there's things that they can't do, and they're seeking help for it. When you, when you see it, and I've seen this day after, like the day after, it's the security team. And they're like running through, like holding stuff over their heads, stopping long enough to pick up the really cool swag, and then running back out like, no, no, don't talk to me. No, 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 I can't tell you anything. No, we don't have an NDA. We we have this notion that vendors are vultures, and all they're doing is coming in for the sale, and they think I've got signing authority, so they, they won't leave me alone. Now, as you've pointed out, some do that. So my question for those folks is, where's the leadership on your side of the fence? But if you want to be a security leader, and you think that you own everything that's possibly security in your company and you can do it all by yourself, uh, you're, you're going to fail, period. Uh, and, and that's not leadership. I don't know what that is, but it's not leadership. When you've got people like Paul and Jack that share their knowledge freely and a company that supports them doing that, and there's others. I know, look, I, I routinely interview vendors uh, and, and the ones that I write about are the ones that rise above. I work with vendors at events all the time. Shai talked about his his concerns around independence. I, I wrestled with that for a decade. I'm finally at a point with my reputation where if I'm working with a vendor, it's because I think that what they're doing is pretty remarkable. And you know what? They want to contribute value. They want to be part of that conversation. If we don't learn how to be part of that, we're stunting our own growth. So I look, the fact that you guys have 60 positions open is phenomenal. I think working with either of you is, is I enjoy the bits I get to do week to week. And I think it's a really good point, Jack. And, and it's so, yeah, it's possible. Your reputation precedes you. It will stay with you. It will follow you. 
if you're a good person who likes solving problems and, and can contribute to our environment, do it. And if you're a leader at one of these vendors, be a leader. Step up. Help out. I would like to ask a rather controversial question, actually. No. <laughs> okay, so in Boston, I teach my Cat Linux workshops. They go really, really well. Now, the interesting thing I've heard from five people now is they've applied at security companies. You know, they don't have backgrounds in security. They have backgrounds in IT, sysadmins, network admins, QA people, and they have the mindset. But the problem is they were offered an entry-level security position, mm -hmm. and the salary was not even remotely comparable to what they're earning right now. Low so or high? Really, low. really low. Yeah. Basically, they literally could not afford to become a security researcher. There are some companies that have a business model of taking that entry level and taking advantage of them and then picking yep. hand picking the ones that to develop and they they built on a built on a churn um, and it's a decent business model but it makes it hard for people mm. to to transition yep mm -hmm. um, this you know I've, I've got a we won't go into my rant about how the government invests almost exclusively in youth which is a good idea mm -hmm. yeah. but to the neglect of those cranky old network and admin no, they, guys. Look, they, they do a lot with workforce improvement boards and stuff around the country. Yeah, but, but, but listen, you're right. That's a different it's debate. Misdir it's misdirected, I think. Let me, in let me throw ways. something into this, though, to think about it. We don't know how to hire for security. We, we hire based on credentials. We yeah, hire based oh on years of experience. We don't Stop hire it. based on competency. We're gonna, well, we, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't hire based on we, ability. What I heard Apollo and we Jack want four, say is that, four years of experience with Windows 10. No, exactly. Right. <laughs> right. That's what these people right. heard. They said, you don't have any credentials and you have no experience in security. We're not going to match your salary. Yeah, right. they, 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 but, because, but because we don't know how... Listen, it, we have grown so fast. I mean, if you think about trying to do security in the 90s where the only conference was you went to Usenix and a bird of a feather, and now what's there, a security conference a day, two a day? Jack, you're responsible for, what, half of them, right? <laughs> so, you know, but, but, so, but, but facetiousness and, and snide aside, um, we, we've grown too fast. Go to most CISOs and ask them to define their role. Ask them to define the competencies of their role. We don't know that uh, yet. Um, uh, uh, I come to work and I get a paycheck. To make things secure. I, I do got, things. I that's have, right. I, I do things. I, I make them feel good about what I did. I call it good. I, I have one quick point too. Did you, we really, you, Paul? You focused heavily on the engineering roles because that's the folks that we work with, and that's you know where we come from. We have a big push for it. Now, we have a so. big push for and engineering. And quite roles. frankly, a lot of the people that listen to the show would right, be in the market for right. engineering roles. So. Right. You know, be aware that uh, sales engineers are out in the field talking to customers and prospects. They're actually in seeing different enterprises, different organizations all the time, helping them secure their environments um, at Tenable and at a lot of other corporations. You know, they're out there in the trenches with technical skills, helping, yes, helping sell product, but helping people secure their environments. So they're always at the sales engineering roles, interview the company carefully for that. Uh, because some companies are better than others. Obviously, I'm biased at how we do it at Tenable. But there are other roles where security knowledge you know, comes into play. Things like product management, things like some of the technical marketing roles. If, um, if you're really good at communications, you know, there are you know, product management roles. There are things that are, you know, the, the, the term evangelist has sort of been abused by some people. But there are roles where you bridge technology and communications mm -hmm. and industry and enterprise and you, you pull those things together and uh, you know so there are a lot of roles for security people and they're not always there and the, the last comment that I've got to make is one of the entry-level paths that um, works really well if it works for you they do generally require being at the company's offices um, starting out in the support team I'm not talking Windows desktop support. That hurts. That, I mean, <laughs> right, that's just... You mentioned Windows. That's a, hurt. that's a pain point right there. <laughs> but doing support for a product, Insecurity. you learn yeah. about the product, you learn about how people use it and misuse it, you learn... <clears throat> yep. You learn what problems realities. they're trying to solve, how yep. they're trying to solve and, them. And that's a great point, because yeah, what you can they, do... Yeah. You learn how to talk to people and figure out what they're trying to solve. It's like, mm -hmm. no, no, don't tell me what you're trying to do. Tell me what you're trying to accomplish or what yeah, you're trying to yeah. solve. Because I can help you configure this thing 
but that may be a myopic view, yeah. you know. So yeah. um, case, case in point to that, Jack. When when I first started my first uh, my first week working in healthcare, way back when we first started this thing, it was a couple of years before that. Uh, my third week at the company, uh, they had a labor dispute, and all non-management, uh, non management, um, uh, non 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 union staff uh, required were required to fill in for all the union jobs. And we spent, you know, something like three months doing that. And it, you know, I, I was in the underbelly of the organization going from the, the tech IT guy to changing bed sheets and doing laundry. Um, and it worked, sort of did every sort of job that was unionized in, the, in that facility of, with some variety um, that I was permitted to. And you really saw how technology was used in that organization also, yeah. across that organization. It's <laughs> like that show that they've got on TV now, where which is crap TV, where the the boss, the owner of the company, goes and works yes. in the mailroom. Yes, and you know that is that is so true. That is so true. By you know knowing that stuff from the ground up really mm -hmm. helps. Absolutely. Build 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 a so build a lengthy career. One of those. The places. number one reason. To get into information security is for the fame and glory. Is that no? I, I, you know what? I, no, maybe I, not. I, you can get some Twitter beards. followers, at the very least. <laughs> yeah. It's for the beards. So, it's, it's for the, the beards. beards. It's okay. for the bitches. With that, we're going to take a short break, come back. I'm going to tell you about some new hack naked merchandise that we have, and we're going to talk about our stories for this week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.